Hi everyone, my name is Thane. My wife's name is Bonnie, who's inside making lunch. We decided to do a YouTube channel because we really enjoy watching videos that others post and kind of vicariously living through them and also getting, you know, getting some nice tips and tricks um, from others uh, that are very experienced in RV life and maybe not so experienced. So we can always learn something from somebody. So we thought we'd put this together. We're going to, hope we're going to have some fun with this. Uh, this one's not going to be really fun. It's just going to walk around our RV and tell you what we got, why we got it, what we like about it. Uh, where we, you know, we may want some improvements, which are not many, and so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so we have a 2018 Forest River 35IK Silverback, that, which they don't make anymore. I believe this is now just a 34IK, so it comes with the cathedral slides. It has the hair windows. Uh, it's got two 30-pound propane tanks there and to the right, and then storage, obviously, next to that. Um, it's got a, I think the awning's 18 feet. It's got more ride steps, which are our second pair. The first pair, actually, uh, the hinge plate, which is on the top going into the RV, uh, went bad on us. So more ride within uh, two or three days sent us a new hinge plate, and we got that taken care of very quickly and haven't any, had any problems with this. We also have, on top, we have the Whisper Quiet AC, the AC, uh, is ducted so it goes kind of like a racetrack throughout the um, roof of the camper and it's really made a huge difference the whisper quiet is just amazingly I, I'm not sure what the decibel savings are but I think it's probably like 80 percent quieter than a standard in roof um, air condition so those have been really nice and being ducted means that uh, each AC unit will travel throughout the whole RV, so that makes it nice. So in case one of them goes, the other one will still supply cool air uh, to all parts of the RV. So our tow vehicle is a um, 2016 Ford F-350, single wheel, rated to tow 15,900, which is um, more than adequate for this camper. The dry weight on this one is 12,400 pounds. It's 39 and a half feet long, 13 and a half feet high at its highest point. Uh, just an FYI, if you do need to measure your height of your camper, make sure you do it while it's hitched up because you may pitch it up a little bit uh, once you hook up to your truck. Uh, so it's always a good idea. So those few inches may save, an, may save an air conditioner down the road somewhere. So if you're concerned about um, overpasses, definitely measure while it's hitched up just to get an accurate um, height measurement. So, let's do a little walk around. So we use the Anderson hitch. We had it on our last camper. We had a Reese Pro Series um, standard traditional fifth wheel hitch and we hated it. It was just such a pain to get the height correct on the camper to get it perfectly into the jaws and have the safety bar engaged. So we always high pin in it and it was just a source of just a lot of frustration and we got a lot of clunking movement in the camper too which you know it could be the hitch or it could be the rails but we don't have any issues with this hitch at all um, we really like it it's super easy to connect and it's super smooth and had, haven't had any problems with it we actually do have a spare red cone in the under the bed just in case something goes wrong with this one you can see it's kind of a little faded and we've we're now i think on year six with this and you can see what, what the base looks like in there. So and I did contact Anderson and they said these the, the um, Anderson hitches were slam brake tested. So that's nice to know. Um, again, no problem. So here's our grill. We have a Camp Chef two burner 35,000 BTUs a piece. We use um, all cast iron cooking. So we have a cast iron grill box, a cast iron flat top on the other side. We have a flat I'm sorry, a cast iron Dutch oven, which we're getting ready to cook some chili on. And we have some cast iron pans inside. So let's take a look at some storage, which is for this unit is really nice and adequate, more than what we need. So kind of a mess right now. We have our cleaning supplies here, our slide lubricant. So we have a dry lubricant for um, the teeth underneath and the rails under the slide. Then we have a wet lubricant, the 303, I believe it is, that we use for wiper seals and also to use around for this um, this uh, side 
pieces here, the dark piece, just to protect it from um, fading and sunlight. So I do that a few times a year. We have a battery operated blower, which is really saves a lot of time blowing off our rug uh, instead of using a broom. And we got blocks, shop rags, and various other supplies in here. And we have our outside portion of our central vac, and this storage area is heated. We li really like the spray port that we have here. So instead of carrying buckets in and out of the camper to put the fire out, so now we use this spray port. This quick disconnect is kind of a pain. You really have to push hard to get the hose in it. So that's the only issue that we have in that. We have our outside cable and a dual power outlet. More ride steps again. Uh, this door comes with two plexiglass panels. So in the wintertime when it's colder or in the fall, or whenever uh, we want to cover that up to stop the cold air from coming in, we put the plexiglass panels on and still able to keep the, the main door open and keep that natural light come in. For tires, we have West Lakes. This is our fourth year on them. Uh, I'm not sure how many miles we have on them. We don't take terribly long trips, maybe an hour to three hour drives. Uh, but we do do about 12 trips a year. Uh, just had the tires inspected. The wear on them is very even. There's a lot of tread. So they still have a lot of life in them. And, but I think after this year, we're gonna trade them out. Not, we're not gonna wait for a blowout. And if you get a little closer, you can see we have the uh, TPMS uh, valves on there. So we have the, um, the TST, I'm not sure what the model is, I think it might be 507. So we use that monitoring system um, for driving. It's also, you know, you can, before you leave for a trip, you can get an idea what your air pressures are like, just go ahead and turn on the unit inside the truck, maybe set it close, close to the camper and see what your, see what your um, PSIs are. Um, but I wouldn't trust that. I'm not sure if I would trust that. I would still use a gauge, but it's just maybe one little thing you can do um, to save you some time um, doing your safety work before your trip. So around the back side here, you can see we had a little issue. There's a plastic piece under this slide that gets tucked under here. And you can kind of see it right there. It's a plastic piece, but over on this side down here, it came out from this trim piece here and got a little water damage on the plywood inside but nothing serious nothing we have to be concerned about and we have a local rv dealership has the plastic we just need to take it up to them and they're going to fix that for us there just wasn't enough material tucked under that that um the trim piece there so eventually after going slide going in and out it eventually came free and we couldn't get it back in there just wasn't enough material there we have the allen bike rack carries four bikes probably not four adult bikes rated at 147 pounds on the non-camp side this is our kitchen and entertainment slide out of course that's our bedroom up there you see didn't put a water filter on forgot that step so i have to do that after the video 10 gallon water heater works off both propane and electric one of the things we like about this camper because of the length you can get that little added window right there in the um right over the uh center hutch area next to the refrigerator and that's worked out really nice just having that little bit of extra natural light was a bonus wasn't a, um, a major criteria the construction was the, the storage capacity the towability the weight um, was the biggest factor and the floor plan so we have a rear living floor plan with a front bedroom and we really like it and we'll do a video inside right now we're doing uh, makeover inside uh, my wife's painting all the walls so we're getting rid of that gray taupe where it's kind of doing like a slight off-white with maybe a, like a hint of yellow in it so it's going to make the cat the, all that brown cabinetry pop out and stand out a little bit more so we'll show you when we got the, get that done we re redid the bathroom we put um, some wainscoting on and put a little trim piece to offset it from the new paint that we had so that looks really nice we put a backsplash over the sinks and we put in um, brand new faucets as well give it a little bit more of a, a modern look so one trip we had last year went to open up the um, the, the uh, outlet cap here and black water started pouring out when we were setting up for a trip what happened was the the black tank um, valve came unseated as we were driving because it was closed on our last trip which was actually here which is cherry hill park in college park maryland 
We're from Annapolis, by the way. And so we bought this as a safety measure now. So we have that on there. Just in case it unseats again, we can stop the flow and get the hose on there and then let it drain out. We got it fixed by pulling the valve, the black tank valve out real fast and we push it back in real quick and that worked. But we had to dump all the black water that was already um, released into a big um, Tupperware bin, carry that bin inside and pour it in the toilet. It was not fun, but it, things like that happen. So we bought one of these, we actually had this tank um, valve, the spare part here actually in it because I've heard of issues like that. So I bought one proactively and I'm very happy that I did. So in here, the wet bay area, um, which is wet in more ways than one before I put this molding up here, what happened was the there's so much of a gap between the door and the frame around the door that water would sit up here and it would drip and it dripped down, it would drip inside after it rained and we got a little bit of water damage. We probably, what you kind of see right there in the corner. Um, so to stop that, we put um, weather stripping on, kind of wrapped it around the side here a little bit. So we put that on and that's made a world of difference and haven't had any issues since. We put it on the other door as well and on the uh, on this door as well where the um, where the uh, batteries are and the hydraulic. I don't know if you can hear that noise but another one thing that happened when we had this in the shop we noticed that our water standing water inside our water connection there would drip down there where that cap is and so the RV place get the service station they fixed it they regraded it so it won't back out like it was but now we're getting a vibration when water starts flowing through that connection there the city water connection so we'll have to see what they can do about that you can actually hear it on the inside of the camper as well um, nothing unusual here tank valves um, and we have a black tank flush I put that adapter on there just to stop from having to walk back to the uh, city water connection and turn it off every time I've had the flush because I usually do about three or four flushes depending on how long the trip was um, so that just saves just a little time saver and it's worked out fine. We got these three uh, knobs here which allow us to shut off the hydraulics for a particular slides. So if we just want the kitchen to come out, say we need to get to the refrigerator before a trip, we'll turn off the bedroom and the main slide and just able to uh, have the kitchen one come out. So that's worked out nice. Water hoses here, I connect the ends of the water hose in, in addition to tying them up so that no um, lingering water in the hose drips out so they're all connected at the ends I have our tie um, I'm sorry our cord reel here for electrical cord which I didn't like at first but I actually like it now because I think it actually does save a little space instead of just throwing it in there and laying it down and taking up more room than it would spooling it through uh, this cord reel so more blocks as well can't have too many blocks we've got some electrical supplies in there we have a multimeter um, fuse testers and some other gadgets which fuse ones should actually be inside but we like to keep all the electrical stuff in one bin um, and keep it organized that way I have the, uh, the WD-40 so when I pull the tank valves out and when I'm dumping I'm going to wipe down the, uh, the stems of the valves there just to keep them lubricated and I think that's it for here we have our obviously our kind of like an outside shower uh, but we have water on this side spray poured on this side as well and that is it for that so the last piece is our auto leveling control here so you'll see we have a uh, check stairs label here so we put that in to make sure our more ride steps are up once we start hitching up um, or auto leveling usually we don't have our steps out we're not doing anything inside until we get get the camper leveled but it's particularly when you're hitching up because you're going inside the camper in and out so much but the steps have to stay out and so we put that up there because I've caught myself a couple times. I'll come over here and oh, see check stairs and I'll walk around and say, yep, they're down. So that's a good little reminder. So auto level system has worked amazingly well. We haven't had any issues with it at all. Like I said, this is our fourth year using it. It's probably the one of the best features we like um, from the, our previous campers, which we've had three or four. But we had a fifth wheel and we had the electric jacks. The hydraulics just run so much faster and the auto leveling makes setting up a breeze. We've all been there when we, we will we'll level front to back 
and then you all of a sudden you look at the front of your camper and it's tilted to one side because we forgot to put it up on boards and level side to side so that's happened to us a few times so this has really saved that um, and like i said these have worked really really well um, it's the six point leveling system of course with this size camper and we don't get a lot of movement in the camper we don't have a tripod on here we can put a standard tripod and just put a two inch ball on it to fit in the anderson hitch but we haven't found a need to do that so we haven't done that and so that is that we got our typical noodles luckily i haven't had a had the opportunity to find out how good they work so but one of these days it's going to happen and but hopefully not to me somebody else can figure that out and here we have the anderson hitch so we have the cone we got the safety chains even though we don't need them uh, for the states that we go in but it's it's a nice safety measure to have in case it does come off and it's it keeps the camper connected to the base um, that's inside the bed of the truck there's the uh, the locking mechanism so once you lower it down onto the onto the uh, the ball in the truck you just push that lever and turn it and that locks the um, the cone on the on the ball inside the bed of the truck all right so we're at Cherry Hill. Uh, we live in Annapolis, right now. I think I might have mentioned that. And we come here, this is usually our first trip of the year, and this one is, just to make sure everything works. So we are here. Um, it's This section here is actually pretty crowded, as you can tell. If you haven't been here, if you're thinking about coming here, the biggest issue with this campground is the beltway noise, which you might be able to hear a little bit of, but you get the crotch rockets, you get the braking, and, but you get used to it, and you just have to find spots in the campground. You don't want to stay around the perimeter close to the beltway you're really going to hear a lot a lot of noise so we kind of stay in here in the center this is our favorite site just because of the yard area and there's a peak up the hill and that's our fitness center there <laughs> in the grass um, one of our neighbors she she works out there every day and this is our last day here we got rain coming in so we're gonna cook some chili on the grill and then we're gonna probably have some bloody marys and just enjoy our last day if you like what you've seen uh, if you have any tips any tricks any suggestions on um, what kind of videos you would like to see we're going to try and do a video on various things some fun things and how we some of our cocktails that we like to make we'll do a little demonstration we like very simple ones uh, we're going to do one on the anderson hitch we're, we're going to do one on um, uh, backing this thing in at our house this is it's a very tight space and show you how we do that what our, our mechanism is for doing that and so just some educational videos just to pass along and then uh, hopefully get some positive feedback from you guys because we really we're not experts at this but we so we really enjoy hearing positive feedback and comments and tips and tricks anyway if you like to look seen so far please click subscribe on the youtube channel and we'll try and get another video out soon. Hope everybody has a great camping season and stay safe. Thanks.